Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we'll be talking about two storms, two winter storms, and actually a third one as well that could be <clears throat> a absolute powerhouse into the New Year's time frame. But that one's only if we have time since it's further out and there's a lot less details about it. But uh, yes, we will be talking about uh, many storms and they have the potential to drop a lot of snow. They already did drop a lot of snow across portions of the west, um, and yes, we have a lot of activity, potentially some pretty good rainfall amounts for portions of the Ohio Valley, Indiana. We have a lot of cold behind these systems for a select portion of the country. We saw snow across Seattle, Portland, pretty much the sea level of the northwest doesn't happen on a yearly basis whatsoever, and um, <clears throat> yes, just a very, very unusual pattern. Um, I wouldn't say unusual, just a very, very uh, extreme pattern of a more usual pattern that occurs with the La Nina. I mean, this is a classic La Nina pattern. We have just activity, <clears throat> storm after storm. We have a lot of cold, except it's again, has some extremes to it with all this cold across the Northwest not usually occurring during the La Nina year. But um, yeah, so a lot of activity, I, you know, and before we get into this, if you guys are new to the channel, hello and welcome. Um, I do, you know, I talks about the weather. I am a weather enthusiast. <clears throat> weather hobbyist, not a meteorologist. For official info, always go to the National Weather Service. So if you, uh, you know, if you do want to check out the channel, check out the videos, do that, and see if you do enjoy it. Subscribe if you do, and liking the video also helps. If you have any comments or concerns, leave them down below, and let's start talking because we have just a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff to go over. And really, this is a rather extreme pattern that is probably probably just going to get more and more extreme as we head into January and feel more of a winter for a bigger portion of the United States. So right off the bat, I just clicked on a random location across the northern United States. I want to show you that. Well, you can see that we already are dealing with decent amounts of snow. Look at North Dakota, 6 to 11, 6 to 12 inches, many, many, many inches of snow um, right there across the arrowhead of Minnesota, right? The north woods are going to be seeing a lot of snow. There are actually blizzard warnings because of the strong winds off Lake Superior and because of the ridiculous amounts of snow that could fall from the length enhancement. And you can see that the expected snowfall amount are 12 to 18. I would not be surprised to see even some 18 plus inch amounts for some of those areas across the shorelines. To the south, it's a bit of a more of a, a lighter amount, can sound kind of a wintry mix, right? A bit of sleet. And further, even south across, say, Milwaukee, um, right? Wisconsin, Madison, Chicago, Des Moines, it's going to be more of a rain system and even some thunderstorms across portions of Ohio and Indiana. The west, we have yet another system moving in, not this one, but the second one I will be talking about. And it is also, we're stirring up a lot of, uh, a lot of winter storm warnings, a lot of weather watches. It seems like these areas have been just under winter storm warning for almost a week now. And I think that's not even what it seems like. That's the actual truth. So again, additional amounts. This is in total. This is additional amounts of 36 to 48, right? I mean, just again, piling on top of the already huge piles of snow there. We have winter storm watches across Southern California right there. <clears throat> just... Uh, <clears throat> just northwest of, uh, or you know, now they're warnings, right there, just northwest of Santa Barbara and west of Los Angeles, or sorry, northeast and east of Los Angeles. And you can see the snowfall amounts here aren't going to be as significant as in the Sierras, but they're definitely enough to prompt a winter storm warning. Here, so let's start showing you some of these weather models. First off, let's take a look at the HER model. It's a model that goes out um, very, uh, not far out, but it's a very precise, very short range model. And let's take a look at its 18Z model run. So this is the uh, data that's a few hours old, but you know, it's still pretty accurate. So let's bring it up to uh, the uh, current time, which is 5 p.m. in the afternoon. This is what it looks like. And you can see we do have rain and snow developing across the Midwest from a, uh, it's kind of like the frontogenesis. It's a very, very uh, strong uh, wind from the south, pushing moisture against a uh, colder kind of force of, uh, sorry, air mass of air, which is why it's producing these clouds and then snowing or raining out of them wherever the temperatures are cold or warm enough, respectively. And notice we do uh, have that system across the Northwest that did bring that snow for Seattle. I saw some snow snowfall reports of four or five inches into Portland. Again, you know, sea level snowfall doesn't happen there too often, but it does. And this time, yeah, the cold, it's definitely enough to produce a snow. It's, it's actually way colder than 32 degrees. It's not just marginal. Notice that by tonight, we really start seeing the snow pick up in uh, intensity and in rate. I mean, just a few hours on this thing and you could miss a whole bunch, right? Just blink and this system is going through. You can see the Twin Cities picking up a lot of snow, really in between the 7 to, I would say, 12 o'clock time frame the most. You can see Wisconsin picks up on that snow. You can see the rainy side to this is rather limited, but we do see a bit of rain into, say, Chicago, Indiana, into Michigan. 
a bit of sleet and winter mix mixing in and then we start seeing the system kind of stall out if you will you could see that we do see a reinforcing shots of a uh, precip and uh, more of a wintry mix moving into kind of areas that did start off more as snow this is again pretty late at night already 1 p.m sorry 1 a.m and now green bay is getting in on that portions of mainland michigan the up again the, the arrowhead of minnesota the snow is at this point kind of abating from north dakota with intensity but it's still it's still snowing and you can see all the way through the morning hours and we could even get some uh potent to nasty thunderstorms across northern Illinois and Indiana. Um, some small hail, lightning, which, you know, by itself, a thunderstorm in late December is a bit unusual, let alone with hail. Um, but, you know, it shouldn't come as a surprise as we saw that moderate risk in uh, in Iowa in uh, mid middle of December uh, just a few just a few weeks ago, just really a week ago. So, uh, again, nothing too extraordinary with these storms. Just, again, a thunderstorm threat showing you the you know, kind of the power of this uh, jet stream and the dynamics. Notice this thing gets sheared out. I mean, it gets so stretched, right? It's snowing from Pennsylvania, Maryland, all the way into portions of <clears throat> southern, yeah, southern Canada, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and this thing finally does drift away. Now, just from this system alone, let me just focus on some of the snowfall amounts. Um, you can see that, again, it's very high across the Lake Superior Shore, right there, northern Lake Superior Shore, uh, Minnesota. And anywhere else, you know, 7 to 10 inches, I, I do think these amounts are underplayed by the HER model because... This is of dry, fluffy snow for these northern areas, and this is assuming a 10 to 1 rate, uh, which is a kind of a, a wetter snow. And notice that if I put this even further, we do see snow across the southern Canada area. So if you live across Toronto, if you're watching, right, Montreal, Ottawa, Quebec, nothing extraordinary, but a 1 to 2 inches is possible. We're mainly kind of towards that 1 to uh, 1 inch side. Not maybe, not, uh, really, 2 inches and plus will be rather isolated. And uh, while that is occurring, you probably noticed that, look, California, right, the west, I mean, just dealing with another round of snow. And that thing, too, does eventually make its way onto the Midwest, which brings us to our next talking point. And let's start showing you this, this next system. So this is our first one. This is the next one. It's already at this point in time, tomorrow late in the afternoon, has dumped all of its precip across California. Look at that tomorrow during the day. Boom. This is 8, 9, 10, 11, right? They're just snowing, snowing, snowing rushes through the mountains and starts producing a band of very heavy rain and snow again across very similar areas the differences with this one is it's much further towards uh the south with that snow at least initially notice iowa right illinois potentially getting it on some of that into portions of <clears throat> into portions of oh uh, well you see wisconsin maybe you're right and portions of portions of minnesota maybe not as uh, far northwest as say north dakota but a lot of so, a lot of snow um, across similar areas, especially across Wisconsin and Minnesota, kind of that border area. Um, notice in Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, mainly rain out of this one. Quite a bit of heavy rain, I may add, could fall out of this. And you can see that this one, um, this one still is a bit more uncertain, you know, where that rain snow, what will happen with it, because it's a bit further out and the models have been rather chaotic with the handling of this system. But let me show you the total snowfall kind of, I guess, additional from the second one. And so that's the first snowfall amounts. And this is the second system. So you could see, you know, the Twin Cities, if this goes a bit further towards the south, could end up with six inches plus widespread, especially from those two systems. I think there could be even some six inch amounts from this first one tonight, but we'll have to wait and see. In terms of rain, I've been just showing you the, the, the kind of the snowy side of this. The rain won't be impressive with the first system, really, but that second one, you could see drops a swath of almost two inches plus across <clears throat> central, southern Missouri, and into right just through St. Louis, Springfield, and into Indianapolis, right? Ohio. So that is, uh, you know a lot of stuff to go over and track in one little video which is why i'm kind of talking fast but notice right if i take a look at wisconsin for today um and minnesota we do have winter weather advisories again not as much snow because of that rain transition over which is why there's just a winter weather advisory still decent amounts due to four four to six and you can see there's a pretty large range for some of these areas i mean four to seven right i would say that that is again because of they don't know exactly how cold it will be and the the thermal profiling is a uh, very marginal with systems like this and in this case yeah it's definitely true you can see wisconsin even has a chance for some snow today uh, again whether or not this will be closer towards a trace or two inches is a rather uh rather big difference so uh, again it's it's a bit uh, you know don't be surprised if you have two inches but also don't be surprised if you don't even see any snowflakes at all if the system is a warmer one at this point looking at the radar it does seem to be kind of right in the middle uh it's uh, probably leaning slightly though towards maybe a colder scenario at, at least for now so maybe maybe some of those higher amounts could come true northern iowa really no winter weather rises for you right that snow drought continues much of the midwest southern midwest have been uh really hasn't seen any of the snow i mean my area hasn't seen snow at all in chicago that's broken 
all records pretty much uh, of any kind and you can see these areas right here there's a winter weather advisory an inch of snow so again nothing extraordinary but you know it's an inch so <laughs> nonetheless and then of course if you take a look at large areas like chicago it's mainly the rain threat you can see and they're just timing out the rain um further across say des moines iowa again it's not even it's not even a rain threat because most of that system just kind of uh, develops uh, north of it and again that rainy side to this is not significant i do want to point out that there are some snow squall warnings across portions of wyoming and uh, idaho at least there were you can see those little purple colors there's snow squall warnings that's a pretty cool thing to see i guess but yeah i mean you can see just how many colors there are that is definitely an indicator of how much uh, activity there is and let me time this system out, both of these systems using a different model. Let's take a look at the NAM 12KM and just show you some differences. Again, mainly with that second one, because this first one, most of the models are kind of uh, agreed with, and they really support similar things. You can see this one shows that snow, that rain developing, and then today, by really tomorrow in the morning hours, where this thing is just mainly a snow scenario for the Midwest, the rainy side to it across the Northeast, but before intensifying it just starts getting sheared out and that's kind of the end of it maybe a bit for new england you can see right there new hampshire vermont but again we start seeing that second system this thing boom boom right there through illinois through wisconsin through uh, iowa with that snow and rain mix and then um you can see the nam really shows a weaker system compared to i'll show you a different model the gfs which shows a much stronger system and if I, was, if I were to show you the total snowfall, you can see with that second system, there could be some snow further towards the south that we'll uh, definitely have to watch for, to say the least. A GFS, a, a good good model. I really do like it. I think it's as good as say, the other global ones, like the European and whatnot. Not many people will agree with that, but it's my tr you know take on it. You can see, again, pretty good agreement with that first system, with that one model I just showed you, and her model, the high-res one I showed you at the beginning. So, you know, at least there's confidence on this first one. Just some, again, thermal profiling differences for it say southern wisconsin michigan how far north that rain snow line gets whether or not it's ice or rain or snow yeah you know there's differences but look there's that second system across the west and boom it does bring a bit of snow from michigan wisconsin right quite a bit for uh, really wisconsin northern wisconsin northern michigan but it too does fall apart and you can see this thing is stronger compared to the nam 12 km and um the rainfall amounts from this are rather uh, impressive actually across some of these areas Again, uh, that rainy side for the second system is going to be more impressive, but that snowier side potentially a bit more muted because of uh, just uh, it just doesn't go as far to the north as this first one is um, kind of intending on going. Right, uh, Canadian CMC. This one's an outlier, I'd say, because of its. Uh, it doesn't really agree with any other model the way it handles the second one, at least. First one, I think it does a pretty decent job, um, and again takes that into the northeast, shears it out. So maybe you could see again a bit of ice across Pennsylvania. That's why there are some winter weather advisories for that area. But you could see it's different because it shows that rain snow line more kind of west or south to north oriented. <laughs> Uh, right there versus kind of a, a north or east to west which other models show so again i don't think this model is pretty accurate with that but it's a scenario nonetheless and um so yeah that's that no do notice that there is more activity in the future and that's actually something i wanted to talk about because um you know there's a lot of these systems a lot of these storms Just get prepared for some snow for some rain across the northeast midwest right this is a large area i can't name out every city but the active pattern does continue we're in a remarkably active pattern and look what some of the models actually most of them do show next week obviously there's differences but look they take a large area of precip from the pacific a little clipper from the north kind of and boom we have a little cold air a massive potentially very significant system develops again uh, potentially maybe even a set of two and just look at that that pressure i mean that is just obviously it's far out but the models are kind of having fun with us at this point but that is just insane uh, right and you can see that uh, you know the, the weather pattern with such a strong jet stream is definitely conducive of such larger systems and i think it will get a lot more serious as you get into january these systems compared to these smaller little events that still are potent just not as significant as <clears throat> some of these well some of these massive ones which again the gfs also shows around that new year's time boom a massive beast um you can see right there and that's not the only one in the long range we continue to see activity snow rain whatnot look at that beast right there right so we'll just have to wait and see um and uh, so that those are the two main models I wanted to show you. I show you some high res ones. What I can show you still is the R gem. So this is the high res Canadian, and it came out at uh, really just a few hours ago. So you know, let's see what it, it shows. And you can see there's that first system. You get some thunderstorm activity right there across Illinois. Right, quite a bit of heavy snow, but it does start falling apart pretty quickly. We do start seeing that second system. A lot of pre precipitation getting pumped in, and you can see the high res Canadian now with the newer information is kind of 
of uh, starting to trend towards what the other models are showing. That rain snow line not being to the south and north oriented over here, but more west to east. And you can see that is probably a much more likely scenario. And that's why I, I did think the Canadian was an outlier and that seemed to be true. And you can see that system also does fall apart pretty quickly. And we do see continued precip chances of, you know, of small nature as well. You can see a little snow right there, a little rain right there. Another system moving in again, potentially that, that, that New Year's monster a little bit across the Great Lakes. So just a lot of little pieces and bits to track. Obviously, there will be some pretty darn cold air, even in the short term. You can see, look at those temperatures right there. That's Those are all negatives. That is very, very impressive. Um, and I do want to say regarding the long range GEFS model, this is the one that goes out very far out. It kind of shows us um, also, well, it goes out as normal, uh, as far out as a normal GFS, but it shows us a, a, a average look at what the models think will happen. It's not just one end. Regarding the cold air, it's been consistently showing it again across the northwest beginning and then bleeding towards the south, south and east, allowing for those big winter storms to kind of produce snow further towards the south. And you can see that the warm air does make, an, uh, you know, occasional rebounds especially if a storm occurs but the cold air is persistent and such anomalies of such strength this far out is a rather concerning sign I would say um, or good sign if you want snow um, and obviously these are much 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 below average two meter temperature shaded you know we could be looking at daily temperatures um, looking something like this right and, and that, that's that's a pretty darn cold weather pattern and at this point, we're just stuck in this like extreme of a, a heat wave across the south, a, a, a Arctic outbreak across the north and west. You're right, you can see warm, cold, I mean, just extremely uh, differing temperature anomalies. And I think that will start to get more tilted into the cold's favor as we go on. And you can see the GFS, a singular model, does show that. You can see right there is a brief phase of where the cold air bleeds all the way to the south. It does get some recurring uh, warm air right there, but again, it seems to be making much more further penetrations than, say, the, the warm air further north. And you can see right there that that is some pretty chilly air. So, yeah, that's basically it. That's kind of what I wanted to show you guys. Stay safe, you know, stay tuned. Um, there is a lot of activity to be uh, monitored, tracked, and even if, you know, there there is a system that's already seeming to be uh, pretty well tracked out. The National Weather Service have given snowfall amounts. It could always change. And, you know, whether or not this rain snow line <clears throat> will be more further towards the south or north with this system, right? How about that second one, whether or not the, you know, the, the rain snow will be, um, uh, you know, more across uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, just these little differences, you know, how cold will it get? What will it be ice, snow, rain, how much of the rain if it does fall or snow? These little differences are <clears throat> crucial to keep in mind and very important to kind of uh, be aware of because, again, nothing is, I guess, stable in, in this in this pattern. And um, obviously, you know, you're, if you're going to see, if you're in Wisconsin, you're not just going to start seeing rain from a, a model like this, but those minor details that could still have a relatively decent impact. And, of course, you can see, that, again, there's that second one. This is a German model I'm showing you, decent model, agreeing with most of the other ones what they're showing, but... Um, and we'll really have to watch for this beast right here across New Year's. And you can see that the German one is definitely showing a conglomeration of air masses there or precip moisture surges. So, yeah, we have a lot of uh, kind of stuff to keep an eye on for. But that's basically it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See ya. Bye.